Hello, welcome to my fourth video in my series about my radiation detection instruments. Um, this one's about my Ludlum Model 3. Um, this is actually a pretty nice instrument. I picked it up off of eBay. Um, all of my stuff is used because, or new old stock if it's really old, um, because uh, I can't really afford to buy new equipment. But um, this guy's pretty neat. This is kind of like my go-to instrument um, for doing experiments um, and doing a number of other things. This is also really nice for hunting antiques um, because it's got an alpha-sensitive Ludlum 44-9 probe. Um, this is sort of a makeshift cap I made from a $2 uh, drain thing that I found at our local hardware store. But anyway, so... Uh, this is an instrument. It's set up for 900 volts. Um, it has, by default, what's called a Ludlum C-type connector, um, which is that guy. This is a right angle to BNC adapter because a lot of probes use BNC cables, so it's nice to have the uh, BNC end available. Um, and then this, the Ludlum 44-9, this particular one has a BNC end. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Someone got it um, in that style. But anyway, um, basic features, it's a Geiger, or it's a rate meter, so it'll give you counts per minute. Um, as you can see here, uh, sort of, sorry, the little handle's making it hard to show you. But um, it's got a battery check mode, it's got an off position, a battery check mode, and then it's got four scales. Um, you can go to 0 0.1, um, 1, 10, and 100 times. And so basically that's what you'd use to multiply the number on the face. So 1K is 1,000, 2K is 2,000, and so on and so forth. Um, anyway, uh, I also have this nice flexible cable because my curly cable broke. Uh, so it's kind of nice. Um, there's a calibration door. Now, there have been um, three modifications made to this guy. Um, so one of the first mods I made was... Uh, because I didn't always want the sound on, but I also wanted to see the individual detection events. I added a pulse LED, um, and I also, related to that, added a data out jack so I can hook this up to a computer and um, have the computer or other device like count the number of pulses digitally. Um, so I can actually use this as a scaler as well um, when it's attached to a pulse counter or a computer. Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, just do a quick operational demo. Um, so, this is set for powered on, set for times one scale. Um, you can also check the battery, um, see that bat test. So, do that real quick. So in battery check mode, you can see how your battery's doing. You can see there that my battery's pretty solidly good, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I'll set it back to times one. Um, and you can see it picking up background radiation here. It's both beeping and the LED lights pulsing. Um, my mod's kind of unique for a lot of um, the other mods that provide a pulse LED because a lot of other mods, when you turn the audio off, the pulse LED doesn't work um, because it's attached directly to the buzzer. In my case, um, I found there's a header on the back of the circuit board here that's generally unpopulated, so I soldered a header on it, and one of the things that it gives you is a pulse out signal. So I hooked the pulse out signal up to a 555 timer um, that stretches the pulse long enough for the LED to blink. And then it also um, connects to what's called an opto isolator. Um, so the pulses aren't directly, so the Ludlum circuitry isn't directly connected electrically. Um, to whatever's measuring the pulses on the other side. It actually uses like a thing with an LED and a transistor. And the transistor outputs gets plugged in here. Um, and the final mod I made was to support a carrying strap because sometimes you want to be able to use it like hands-free. Um, I tracked down these hinges with uh, like the little strap connector here. Um, the old hinges didn't, or the old unit actually didn't have those so I had to drill out the rivets um, that held the old uh, latch on and then replace it with these ones with screws. Uh, but anyway, so I'll talk a little bit about the probe now. Um, this is what you call a pancake probe. Um, this is a Geiger-Muller tube. Um, 
And this is actually a pretty cool one because it allows you to pick up alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Um, so what you're seeing there, that gray, is um, a thin, thin, thin mica window that allows alpha particles to pass through. Um, so what that can do is it's really helpful in picking up things that emit alpha particles like americium-241 or, you know, like uranium glassware. So you can actually see that getting tons of counts. Um, the majority of those are actually going to be alphas. Um, a lot of um, Geiger probes don't pick up alpha particles. But yeah, anyway, this is a pretty nice one. I also have adapted an old um, CDV-700 probe. Um, the CDV-700 Geiger counters are like the yellow ones you always see in the movies, you know, when they're trying to scare you about radiation or aliens or some crap. But what I've done is um, I modified this to have an, an anode resistor. I think it's a 1 mega ohm anode resistor. And connect with a BNC cable because these things actually just hard connect into the meter without the ability to change the cable out generally. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and hook this guy up to the Geiger counter and then we'll measure that plate again. And I'll show you the difference between the beta gamma and alpha probe. Okay, so I've got the beta gamma probe hooked up. Um, actually I actually have another video on this guy um, specifically. But anyway, so I'll go ahead and fire it back up. And you're not getting a lot of counts off of this guy. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Not really. But then, take the cesium-137 sample. Yeah, get a lot more counts. Forty, maybe fifty counts per minute is what that's showing. Uh, oh no, sorry. <laughs> Four hundred to five hundred counts per minute it's on the times one scale. And that's with the beta shield closed, so I'll go ahead and pop the beta shield open. And this will allow it to measure beta and gamma particles. So, with the beta and gamma shield open, it's actually going to get more readings. Oh, you know what? I should probably take the sample out. So it's going to... Some of the betas are being shielded by the plastic on the box. There we go. There we go. Yeah, and this is this probe's actually really good at detecting cesium-137 because this is exactly what it's designed to detect. Um, because there's cesium-137 and nuclear fallout. So this is actually doing a really good job of picking up the cesium-137. Yeah, that's at the beta shield closed. Oh, I almost forgot. So here's a cool thing. Um, this thing has two averaging modes, um, a fast and a slow mode. So it's got a turtle and a rabbit. Um, so what happens in fast mode is it considers like the last, I think, four seconds of readings when averaging to create the uh, uh, number of counts per minute. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the beta shield open again so we get lots of readings. But you'll notice that the needle will jump around quite a bit. See that? It kind of is like a little bit more jerky and it'll go up and down. Um, if I put it on slow mode... It'll actually do a lot um, smoother averaging of counts, and I think it does uh, 22 seconds worth of counts. So it'll consider um, more of the counts to average. And it provides a smoother and a little bit more accurate and easy to take reading. Um, yeah, so I'll show you here. And it's also got a reset button. This actually resets the uh, counts that it has. So I'll show you a little trick I use when measuring samples. So I'll switch it to fast. And I'll measure my sample. This is the cesium-137 again. And then once it kind of gets to the area, you know, it kind of starts jumping around an area, you can switch to slow. And if it stays kind of in the region you're at, um, then you can take your reading. That's a pretty cool feature. Um, oh, yeah, and also, it's worth mentioning with this guy that... Uh, um, it's really easy to modify and drill holes and add and subtract parts um, for various probes and stuff. Yeah, but uh, anyway, it's a really solid instrument and it's probably one of my go-tos um, because of that. Anyway, cheers.